Hi folks, welcome to part six of the Vintage Shasta Trailer Restoration Project. They're all kind of running together at this point. Just as we rebuilt this wall, we need to switch over to this side of the trailer and do the same over here. So today we're going to remove the siding, remove the framing, and hopefully start construction on this wall. Do you know about the braces transfer dance? Oh yeah, the braces wee oo transfer dance. Transfer dance. Now you're transferring and mastering the braces. Transfer dance. So we're removing some screws, taking off some hardware. Off with the rain gutter, I say. Stop. Hold it right there. Okay, I don't mean to break from the rhythm of trailer disassembly, but I have an idea. See, I was at the thrift store the other day, and I like to do a little bit of picking, and I found a Roland Digital Intelligent Piano. It's not a keyboard. There's a difference. I just don't know what it is. It's 15 years old, and if you ask me, that was really the golden age of digital music production. The year 2000? Yeah. It was $30. I couldn't afford not to buy it. So we went ahead and hauled it home, and I'm thinking that this video is very similar to the previous video I did, in that we're building a wall for the trailer. It's going to be very, very similar to the previous wall I built. So I'm thinking in this video, I'll speed up the footage and I will add a custom musical composition to accompany it. I'll add a little bit of flair, a little bit of color, and I hope you like it. siding removed from this side of the trailer now I can get a good look at the frame and it's pretty much the same as the other side quite a bit of rot here on this front edge and along the bottom and of course in the rear corner so you know the drill I'll slap that siding onto the plywood in the garage trace it out frame it up and reinstall the new wall Siding is screwed down to the paneling and I've also traced the pattern of the wall. Now I need to remove the siding and start framing. One thing I did a little bit differently this time that I didn't think about when I was building the last wall is that instead of using just tape to hold these individual pieces of plywood together, I went ahead and got some scrap pieces of paneling and screwed them to the plywood at the seams to hold everything in place so that hopefully there will be minimal slippage and distortion when I remove this siding and try to build the wall. Yeah, yeah, you like it? Try this one on for size. I call it wall lay flat. If I had a dollar for every time you hollered, I'd take this wall and it would all fall down. Uh -huh. Trailer panel two step. Trailer panel two step. framing 
up this second wall, and one thing that I'm trying to pay close attention to is how the dimensions of this wall compare to the first wall that I built. I want these two walls to be as similar as possible, if not identical. For instance, the overall length of my first wall is 150 and 3 eighths with a height of 80 inches. So I'll use these reference numbers in addition to the outline that I traced to determine the final dimensions of the wall. You know what? A gift from me to you. I promise. No more music in this episode. Framing for wall number two? Complete. Now let's flip it over and give it the cookie cutter treatment. Before I lift this thing up, I'll remove these weights that I have arranged in various places around the wall. These are here because I noticed when I was building the wall, there were areas where the paneling wasn't tight up against the wood framing and I put these weights here to hold everything close together just until the glue dried. Lucky for me, I have a few extra bricks laying around from another project. You see, I have a flower bed out in front that has turned into the neighborhood cat toilet, and I've decided to turn that flower bed into a nice brick patio to deter that activity. This morning at 4.30, I was awakened by the sounds of my stupid cat fighting with another neighborhood stupid cat. And with cats, if there is a disagreement, they don't just arm wrestle to decide the victor. They yell at each other for two hours until the cat universe aligns just right so that they may bite and claw each other. So with cats, not only do you have the joy of being awakened in the wee hours of the morning, but you also have the pleasure of a $350 vet bill for lancing a golf ball sized abscess. But don't worry, he'll be back out crusading for his place in the neighborhood cat hierarchy in no time at all. Now that this beautiful butterfly has shed its cocoon, it's time to, you guessed it, screw the plywood to the frame. In the spirit of being thorough, I probably should videotape each and every screw that I install, but I think I'll spare you this time. Okay, I finished installing the screws and the plywood, and I say, not a moment too soon. I'm ready to get this house guest out and reclaim my garage. Listen, I said he could stay here for a couple of days, just till he gets back on his feet. Next thing I know, he's laying on my couch all day, half-dressed, clogging up the internet and the toilet, eats all my food, and every time I ask him to leave, it's like talking to a wall. Good riddance. Don't let the screen door hit you on the way out. You want it kind of like this, so the bottom goes in. Back up a little more. Back, 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 back there.
And just like that, easy as one, two, three, the Shasta trailer has two new sidewalls. Actually, that might only be as easy as one, two. Won't you join me next time when we start building the rear wall of the 1973 Shasta 1400? Thanks for watching.